Hi everyone, Debbie here. Welcome to the channel. So I am going to work a little more on my cookbook. This is a composition notebook that I am using for a cookbook that I want to transfer all of my recipes that I've collected over the years from various different spots. Yeah, so many different sources and so many little scraps of paper and and so, so many recipes just spread out everywhere in tucked in drawers and cupboards. I want them all in one source. So I've started to create this cookbook. If you haven't seen the first video, part one of this composition notebook, go watch that first so you can see how I've constructed this. Now I haven't removed any pages from here because I think I explained in the first one, oh, I don't care if this turns into a big chunky monkey. I'm going to make a tie to go around it. At least all my recipes will be in one spot. This has 180 pages in it and I kind of figured it out and I think I need close to that to get everything that I want in here. Now some recipes are smaller and I may be able to just do a half a page and then a half a page and put two recipes on one page. But some recipes are bigger or have more directions and therefore they'll take a little room so they'll be one page. So I've kind of worked out what I want. I figured 180 pages, um, that's 90. So I've got 90 single pages and I've de decided that I wanted to make some categories. So I've got one pot meals. I love doing one pot meals. I also have mains and sides. There's desserts, salads. I wanted a category for preserves and I make some homemade cleaning solutions. So I thought I'd leave eight to 10 pages for homemade cleaning cleaning solutions. Whatever is left at the back, that's where I'm going to write those out. So I've got one, two, three, four, five, six categories. And when I added those all up, that left 15 pages to use for dividers and things like that. So I'm using that as an estimate. Yeah, just an estimate. So I want an index. 24, 48. That's 100. I only need three pages for my index. So I'm going to do one, two, three pages for my index and I'm going to put my first divider here. So let me show you how I've been making my dividers. I just chose paper that I wanted for the divider. So first of all, most of my paper that I'm using for this is from this In the Kitchen by Recollections. This is a paper pad that I picked up a few years back when I saw it because I absolutely loved it. I love this whole In the Kitchen theme. Picked this up at Michael's on sale when I saw it. And these are the other ones that I chose. The only one that's not from this paper pad is this. This was just a single page from, I think it was, I forget what it was. It was from Dollarama and there were just a few pages in a package. It was like $4 or something. And I picked it up because I absolutely love these donuts. So this is going to be the divider page for my dessert section. Of course it is. I chose this one for my salads. You can't hardly see them, but I thought this green would be nice for salads. And then for preserves, of course, these jars. And then for my, uh, my one pot meals, I thought this would be really good. And for my mains and sides, these whisks. There's no up or down on this, so that's pretty good. And this one is going to be for my uh, DIY cleaning solutions and things. So what I've been doing with these, being really careful to orient this, I've just been sliding them in the back page here. 
very carefully lining up the bottom, closing my book. I've been using a pencil, one line, two lines. And if you don't have a 12 inch paper trimmer, that means that you can still do this project just with some decorative papers and your scissors. You don't need a 12 inch paper trimmer to do this. So I'm gonna cut this out. And right now I'm not trimming that rounded corner. I did that on my first two. On my first one I was fine because of the type of paper that it was. And then on the second one, I did this. I made sure my paper was facing up. That was fine. I cut my little rounded corners, but then I realized after I did it that because I'd flipped this over when I turned it back, my little rounded corners were on the inside instead of the outside. So I stopped doing my corners. I'll go back and do them after. So let's see what I'm going to put first. I think I want to do mains and sides first. I'm going to do this paper right here. It's for mains and sides. I decided three pages for that. And I am going to put this on here and then I'm just going to glue it down. So because I want this to fit really, really well, I'm going to put it on here. I'm going to get it lined up really well with these papers. Then I'm going to take this and I'm just going to fold it back. This is just going to make it simpler for me. This art glitter glue dries or, or doesn't dry as fast as I keep saying. It grabs that fast. So I am going to go just really thin down this outside edge. I want it to, to be really good there. Then I'm going to just do myself a line down here. I'm going to let that down. grabs so fast to that paper. So I know it's on here nice and straight. And then I can do Okay, let's get this down here. There, so one divider. Now what I also have decided is that I didn't want to take the time to go and make all of these little tabs here. So I think I would really like to go and buy some pre-made tabs because I don't have a tab punch. Like I said, I love doing crafts. I'm like so many hundreds of other people. I don't have the money to buy every single little tool that's out there. And if I had a tab punch, I'd probably want more than one punch because I'd want different kinds. I'm quite happy to just go and buy some tabs. So I'm going to leave a nice chunk of pages for that. And I am going to do my one paw meals here. So I'm going to put this one on here. And 
it's a really overcast day and it rained last night. So it's just, it's still not sunny out. Everything's still wet. It's just a really good day to be sitting inside and doing something relaxing. I've left my bone folder at home. All I've got with me is this plastic ruler. It works. It does the job. I know I see comments a lot that say, I don't have all the tools, so I can't do those projects. Well, this is just going to show you that you don't need all the tools. You can still do all the things. I did all my projects before I got those tools. And I know y'all be saying, oh, she bent that paper. I didn't put a crease in it. I just bent it and it will flatten down when my book is sitting down with something heavy sitting on it for a little while. There, so two of them. 10 maybe, can I do 10 pages? This is for my one pot meals. That would give me 20 one pot meals in here. So I'm going to do 10 pages there. Then I think I'll do salads next and salads was going to be this green page. So it's really important that you get it lined up nicely because if you get it lined up nicely one, and you hold it down really firm, once you do this, you should be okay. And like I said, if you have any glue that comes out, just wipe it off right away so that you don't glue any of your pages together. So I've got salads. Now, I don't need as many pa pages for salads. There's only so many salads that I make. We've got a few family favorites and, um, you know, like our broccoli salad that we make with the raisins or cranberries in it. And, and yeah, so there's only just a few like that that we absolutely love. So I think probably six pages because that's 12 different salads and having your tried and true recipes salads are experimental in the most part I mean you're just throwing things in a bowl and then trying to figure out what salad dressing you're gonna like on it so I'm gonna use six pages for salads and that's quite a few so I am going to do desserts next So I'm just going to do a 
the slope is getting bigger the further open my book is as well. So what that's doing is making it a little bit harder for me to see to line this up. So I'm going to do it this way. There. And I am definitely going to put recipes on the back of the cover as well. I'm not going to bypass that page because every page is going to be used in here, I'm hoping. So my desserts, now desserts, wow. I've got a few recipes that I really like. So I'm going to leave at least a dozen pages for that. And I'm going to do preserves. Isn't this the perfect page for preserves? Um, of course it is, with the jars on it. Okay, and again, I think I'm going to do the same thing. I'm just going to glue this outside edge so that I can flip it. So, this isn't supposed to be a craft with me. So, while I'm working on this, I'm fully expecting you guys to have something out on your desktop, on your tabletop, and be making something. Um, <laughs> so, leave me a comment. Let me know what you work on while you're watching your YouTube videos. I'd love to know. I turn it upside down and then I line this up there really, really carefully. And then this is on here. So it's not going to shift around now while I glue it. Then I can just take this flip it over like this and I can glue the back of this piece of paper. I'm leaving the glue in a little bit off of those corners. Like I said, I still have to round them. And then just pick this up, take this corner, and lay it flat. So I have my preserves now. We have a lot of preserves and I only 15 pages for my preserves.
So if you're hearing a little bit of whining and a little bit of wiggling here and noises in the background, my puppy has a cone on right now. Um, he, yeah, he had a, a bit of a scuffle with a larger dog. I had right of hold of him. Uh, that didn't seem to make any difference. So I took him to the vet to get him checked out because he did have a small puncture wound and it was right in the top of his leg and he was limping I was so scared that he had more damage he, he's a feisty little thing the owner of the dog was doing everything he could to stop it my little guy started it so he's a scrapper and a troublemaker and he thinks he's got uh, he's got little dog syndrome and is very defensive so he'll start growling before there's even any aggression towards him and which sometimes will set a big dog off especially you know certain breeds um, and these these guys are mixed breeds but they do have bulldog in them um, my son's girlfriends and my son had the other dog right by the neck. I mean, he couldn't, he couldn't do any more damage than what he was already doing, but it was scary nonetheless. And I blame myself for it because you think you've got care and control and sometimes just being on a leash isn't care and control. I should have had him in air jail. I've been really diligent about taking him for walks off the property to do his business while I've been visiting here so that he's not encroaching on the other dog's territory. It was just a matter of I went out the door of my camper with Chester and it was right at the exact same time that my son opened the door, let his dog out to go to the bathroom. So it all happened so fast. There wasn't anything that we could do other than keep them apart as best we could. And I took him to the vet to make sure. So he didn't have any serious damage. He had a puncture wound. So he's on antibiotics just in case. He's on an anti-inflammatory because there's a little bit of bruising on his leg and it could have been much worse. Um, I will carry him from now on down the road before I let him down to go to the bathroom. He's just a little guy. It's so sad when you see that vet bill and they've got down the weight of your dog and they always put it in kilograms here and they put down zero. So he doesn't weigh anything. <laughs> Yeah, they put down zero on his weight because that's just the way it comes up on the computer. He's about six pounds, maybe six and a half pounds. <laughs> if he gets really chubby, he weighs seven. So, <laughs> so yeah, he's a, he's a Chihuahua mix. So I'm coming along here. I'm happy with the way this is turning out so far. So I'm just going to take a second here and I'm going to trim some of these corners because I know it's going to look so much better when I do. So I have these and they are really cute little labels. So this one, this one, this one, and this one I'd like to use. So cut across to here. So that one. This one, this one, and this one. Now, 
and I'm going to fussy cut these. So I don't want the white border on them. I want them to be to the color. So I'm just going to start cutting at the color and I'm just going to fussy cut these out. That's so much better because when I lay these on here, I don't want that white border. And that's what I'm going to use these for. I'm going to use these like this. So give me a minute to cut these out. So I was on my phone and I was just checking a little bit of news, a little bit of current events, things like that. Because I, I don't have a TV here at the camper. I don't get my daily shot of news. And I saw how big the park fire was getting. The one that burnt is burning in Jasper National Park and uh, burnt the town of Jasper. And the amount of firefighters that are there working. And oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. That thing is so out of control. It's terrible. They're throwing so much at it right now, which is kind of, uh, I don't know. To me, it seems like it's kind of a, um, close the barn door after the horse got out kind of scenario. Like if, if when it first started burning before, I mean, when they knew it was out of control, when they first knew it was out of control, and they knew it was even headed towards the town of Jasper. If they had have thrown at it then, what they're throwing at it now, I'm sure it would have been a lot easier to get under control. Um, just saying, I, I know there's going to be a dozen people that will disagree with me, but... Um, they knew when they were fighting it for the longest time that it had the upper hand, that they weren't staying ahead of it. But it's like, I don't know. Um, you know, correct me if I'm wrong, because, I mean, I'm not there, so number one. But is are they throwing so much at it now because other countries and, and people are just jumping in to help now because it's so out of control? Were these options available if they had been asked for? I mean, I'm sure people were watching. So I've got four of these. I'm definitely putting sweet treats. <laughs> you know where I'm going to put the sweet treats, right? Of course I am. So sweet treats on here. Because, of course, I just want to decorate these up a little bit. So, yeah, when you're doing your book, you just do you. So sweet treats, that's really cool. Then I don't have to write anything on it. I think I want to do a different type of label on here because I lose the lid of my jar on that background paper. But I kind of like this one. And do I want the green on it? Or do I want the peach? Because this one has that darker... Yeah, this one has that darker line here, which is kind of nice. And like I mentioned when I was doing it before, for all of you people who are um, diehards about inking all of your edges, go ahead and do that if that's what you do. I do it a lot. I don't do it all the time. And because it was a cookbook... 
I just wanted that clean look. If you take a look at some of my old cookbooks, um, they get used, <laughs> to say the least. They're used, and they are a little on the grimy side. And so I like this because it's got the green line. So has anybody noticed this page yet? So I put this page on upside down. <laughs> I didn't say anything when I did it. I just, I figured somebody would let me know in the comments. But the fruits and vegetables that are on this page are just kind of a very faint white print on the green background. And they don't show very much. And they're upside down. But I don't care. <laughs> if I tried to take that off, I mean, I could rip that page out, turn that over, and glue it on again. But that's the first time I've heard the rooster, I think. Unless I'm just getting so used to it that I don't hear it anymore. Has he been um, crowing in the background? And I didn't notice. So, yeah. There. I don't want one of these on here because it's a jar already, so a different kind of a label. I have other ones, other shapes of labels. So maybe on here, I'll do homemade cleaning solutions. Yeah. There. So to put these little labels on here, at home, I actually have some really tiny little stamps and a stamp pad, the little alpha stamps. And I think I'm just going to use a lowercase letters and do them with lowercase letters and make my little labels. So this one is going to be for canning and preserving. Oh, look at these. This this paper pad even has recipe cards. I could put these, cut them up, and put them in a pocket and use them when somebody wants a recipe. I could use these to write that recipe down. So I've got one, two. Ah, uh, this is the page I'm looking for. It's just a label page. Yeah, so I've got quite a few of these recipe cards, and that's exactly what I'll use them for. Oh, I'm so glad I thought of that. Um, so this nice little plain label right here for preserves and There. Now you could go with all kinds of contrasting colors. I like matching a little bit in a project like this because it makes the pages a little more calm. If that makes sense. So because I love all of these greens and I that's my least favorite jar on there. This is going on that jar. So what else do I have? This one's done. This one's done. I think I just have the first one. I think it's just this one. I think I like just this really plain maybe this one even 
Yeah, maybe this one. Let's grab this one. Yeah, so so it was exciting around here. I spent all the Sunday of the holiday long weekend at the emergency veterinary hospital in St. John waiting for Chester. They had, of course, they had to sedate him. The biggest fear with a little small dog like this when it gets grabbed by a larger dog is, did he shake him? No, he didn't because we were all over it so fast. He never had a chance. My son just put his arm right around the other dog's neck and held him still. So they were locked onto each other. I mean, he grabbed Chester by the leg, but Chester wasn't completely 100% defenseless either. Um, he grabbed that big dog. He just reached down in front of him and grabbed that big dog by the top lip. And he had his lip locked. He, I mean, he locked onto it. Um, don't ever think that it's just a big dog that'll lock onto something. Chester was locked. I mean, he's Chihuahua. And he was locked onto that big dog so so hard that underneath this thumbnail, I have a massive bruise because the only way we could get them apart was I had to put my thumb right in Chester's mouth and pry it off of the other dog's lip, like literally. And because he's stubborn, he wouldn't let go. And he was being defensive. If he let go, the other dog could have let go and bit his head. Or I'm sure he was protecting himself. Um, yeah. So if you're gonna <laughs> if you're gonna comment, he was protecting himself. I know he was protecting himself. Um, and when I told the emergency vet that he had a hold of the big dog, she reached over and pat him on the top of the head, and she goes, "Good boy, Chester." <laughs> So, so I've got my, I've got all my sections done. I'm actually just going to use a pencil, just a number two. Bec and I'm going to write in here really, really lightly um, what each section's for. So, this one is going to be mains and sides. And I'm just going to put it on here like this. Mains and sides. And then I'm going to do one pot meals. And the reason I'm using this is because this is a softer lead and this will erase and I won't, I won't leave anything. And then this is going to be salads so remember just do a small section I've got sweet treats on here already so I don't need to write desserts on there I'm going to do canning and preserves Because I dehydrate some stuff and things like that as well and make mixes. This is a great place in your uh, recipe book to put those knockoff seasoning mixes. If you want to put those in there, like your taco seasoning, your homemade Italian seasoning, things like that. And then on my last one, this will be homemade cleaning solutions there. okay so the final piece on this cookbook is going to be for these so I went through my paper pad took out the pages that had these recipe cards on them. There were six recipe cards to a page, so they're four by six inches. These are just perfect for giving somebody a recipe. 
So I, I have this scrap and I want to put these index cards in here, these recipe cards in here in the back so that I can save them. So I'm going to turn this into a pocket. So to do that, I'm just going to take my ruler. I'm going to go in about a half an inch. I'm going to grab my scissors and I'm just going to go like this and make a little indentation so that I can fold this edge in. Just enough to fold that edge in like this. Because I want this pocket to be able to hold these. And if it doesn't have a little bit of depth to it, it's not going to hold these cards. Now, let's do a little bit of measuring. Let's go to the back page because that's where I want it to fit. I mean, of course, the back page and the front page are going to be the same. So I want my next score line to be to be about here. Lots of room either way for that. So I'm just going to take this. I'm going to fold it into there. I'm going to line these two edges up this edge and this edge up here. Hold on to them and then fold down. That'll give me a straight edge. That'll give me a right angle right there, a straight edge. A fold is definitely going to give you a straight edge, but it's the right angle that I was going for there. I don't need much on the end, just about a half of an inch to glue down. So I'm just going to cut that off there. I'm going to take this top and from the fold here I'm going to just slice down that line. I'm going to do the same thing over here. I'm going to slice up on an angle to there so that when I go to slide things in they don't get stuck on a straight edge right there. There's a little bit of an angle to help it slide. Now Across the bottom, I need another fold here. So once again, I'm just going to go across the bottom. I'm going to use the X points where these crisscross over. I'm going to use that. There, as a line. And then... So you're watching me do this and you're seeing that I don't have any of the proper tools to be doing this. There's no scoreboard. There's no bone folder. There's no paper trimmer. I'm not doing precise me measurements. This is still going to work because this has got a grid on it and I followed a little bit of this grid. This is going to be just fine. But down here... I'm going to cut across this corner right here and across that corner right there so that when I glue these, now is it deep enough? Is it too deep? It's about right. So now that I have this, I'm just going to take this. So I'm just going to measure four inches there from the fold, not from the bottom, from the fold. And I'm going to measure four inches here. Now that I've got this all made, I'm going to put my ruler on my two dots. And just to make sure I've got a nice square pocket, I'm going to trim that straight. So I've got a pocket. And it's perfect. It's just perfect. So, see how 
now if I go to glue this down, I'm going to have a little bit of room here and the paper will stretch just a teeny tiny little bit as well. Paper stretches when you put stuff in and out of it a little bit. So I'm going to put glue on here on this flap and I'm putting glue on this flap. I'm putting some glue on the bottom flap and I'm going to call this cookbook done as soon as I get this in here. So these are going to sit pretty much central and I want a little bit of my, let's move this over a little bit. There. Now, the only thing, if a little bit of glue seeped out underneath here, it would glue your pocket down. So what I do is just slide a ruler into my pocket and make sure that I can get my ruler all the way over to the side and into those corners. And now I've got a place to keep these wonderful recipe cards. Just so. So let me show you what I've got done. Because I'm going to call this recipe book complete. If I was to let this go to somebody else or to, to, to just give this to somebody as a blank, this is how I would give it. And I wouldn't put anything on the labels. But... This is what I have, a place for me to stick temporary recipes until I can get them in my book when I'm gifted a recipe from somebody else. I have a place for very special recipes. For me, that's going to be those recipes that I got from my mother that were in her handwriting. So I want to keep those. That's going to be like a, a special tuck spot for me. And then I have an index. And then I have mains and sides. I have one pot meals. I have salads. Of course, you're going to put in your recipe book the sections that you need. I also have desserts, sweet treats. And then I have a fairly large section for canning and preserves and I even put a section in the back here for homemade cleaning solutions so I have everything that I need a recipe for in my little book and then just as something special inside the back page I have all of these really cute recipe cards from this paper pad so that I can share my recipes with others as well. Uh, if there's a recipe swap, um, I don't know if anybody in your area does them, but I have done it a couple of times. A recipe swap, these would be great to, to send two of your favorite recipes to a friend with a few extras and get them to send you two of their favorite recipes back. That would be wonderful. So, that's my cookbook. So let me know now in the comments, would you like to see me doing the pages? So as I put recipes in, maybe once a week or maybe twice a month to put in a page and decorate it with one of my recipes. And yeah, so let me know if something like that would interest you. I'm always looking for other things to do on my channel. So give it a thumbs up if you have enjoyed me doing this cookbook. I would really appreciate it. It helps YouTube notice that you're watching. Also subscribe to my channel if you haven't done that already. Come on back to see what else I'm up to next. I'll see everyone in the next video. Until then, have a really great day, everyone. Bye-bye for now.